Hello, this is Spike Chartel here with another video because I feel like it. And the idiocy has gotten to a point that I feel like it. I probably should do another one, so right to it. So at the beginning of this week, a freshman in Texas named Ahmed Mohammed, probably the most stereotypical name for a Muslim ever, decided to bring a homemade clock to school to show an engineering teacher. The problem was that it was in a case and to an untrained eye it looked like it could probably be a bomb. Now I know some of you are screaming that it was actually racism and Islamophobia and all that good noise like good little automaton Democrat liberals like to do. But the fact of the matter is it's not like he walked in with something that was easily identifiable as a clock. Of course what I am saying people that are the maddest about it are going to forget about it in a month anyway because the newest thing to be outraged over will be out and y'all will have a new crusade At least we forget about that lion a month or two back you know the one that made all of you suddenly care about the plight of endangered species when you didn't have a damn clue lions were endangered prior to that but i'm getting off track here fact is I don't think this case in Texas was about racism or supposed Islamophobia. At least not entirely. Hell, probably not even mostly. But instead was more of a result of a little something that all you pseudo-liberals who are screaming this racism nonsense pushed for after Columbine called zero tolerance policy. Fact is... Teachers and school staff have to take action any time a student does something that could be construed as a threat, even if what has been done is obviously harmless, so much so that my man Stevie Wonder could see it. Ahmed isn't the first student to get suspended for something like this either, I might add. But unlike the two examples I'm about to talk about, he ended up getting invites to the Facebook headquarters and the White House. Guess when the policies you support cause people to do things that can be construed as racist, you have to rush to make sure that people don't think too much about what really happened. Josh Walsh, who was in second grade at the time, and only eight, got suspended from school for chewing a Pop-Tart to look like a gun in the early part of 2013. Funny though, I don't remember any White House invite for him, or the head of a tech company offering to give him a tour for the injustice. Where were the hashtags saying, I stand with Josh? Guess people didn't really care enough because no one could say that the school was being racist since Josh just happened to be white. Since there was no publicity that pseudo-liberals could exploit, they didn't really give a fuck about Josh. And to be honest, they don't really give a fuck about Ahmed either. They're just using him to push along their own selfish agendas. Then there's the case of the Arizona boy, whose name I don't have that in 2007, at the age of 13, got suspended from school for five days for drawing a gun. Where were the hashtag campaigns supporting him? Where was all the outrage then? Oh, that's right, it didn't fit into the narrative of racism that pseudo-liberals like to use because the kid, again, was white. So pseudo-liberals don't give a shit about him, and again, they don't really give a shit about Ahmed either. Look... I'm not saying it was right for Ahmed to be hauled to juvenile detention over a stupid misunderstanding. But let's be clear about what that misunderstanding was before we start in with the hashtag campaigns and cries of racism. Let's be honest here. Because while it's fucked up that someone like Ahmed Mohammed could get arrested over a science project, it's not like the same thing wouldn't have happened to him if his name were John Smith, had lily white skin, and attended Christian church every Sunday, and happened to be captain of the football team. Fact is, if you want to be pissed off about something, why don't you start with the zero-tolerance policies that your favorite ass clowns pushed for after Columbine, that tied the hands of school staff when it came to making decisions about who was a threat and who wasn't. You know, what they used to do for all those decades before Columbine, that worked perfectly fine. And it's not right that any of these kids got in trouble either. And none of them were doing anything wrong. If we could admit that, then we can actually get to the real root of the problem. 
Uh, of course, that would mean not getting caught up in the fervor of witch hunt like hashtag campaigns, so that's probably never going to happen. I can dream, though. I am Spike Chartel, son of the intergalactic pizza cat. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you really like this video, please share it with as many people as you can. I do have other videos as well, and if you like them, you should make sure to hit the subscribe button since you're here anyway, so that you know when the next video comes out. As always, have a nice day, and may the pounce be with you.